All right, here we are. Thank you, everyone. If I could get everyone to get comfortable, we will start with the presentations. So uh, firstly, welcome everyone to the MTAQ 2020 Apprentice of the Year. My name is Paul Cooper and I'm the General Manager of the MTA Institute, the training arm of the MTAQ. Uh, apologies from our group CEO tonight, Mr. Brett Dale, uh, who had another equip, equip commitment. Um, so I'll be taking over the presentation sheets. Uh, firstly, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which MTAQ now stands and the Yagara and the Yambaga people and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people continue to play within the MTAQ community. This is a COVID safe event and is operating in compliance with the COVID safe checklist. Details for this are at the reception area and contact tracing will be done via the QR codes. So you would have all had an opportunity to scan in, register and put your details in through that process there. Uh, one person can register with the group or family and uh, please practice social distancing by staying in your group and remaining a safe distance from other guests and sanitise your hands on entry and exit. I'd also like to take this moment to thank MTAA Super for their support of this event tonight. Certainly we welcome these, this support and their support of apprentices throughout Queensland. Ladies, gentlemen, nominees, families and MTA Queensland staff, it is a great honour to be standing here in front of you tonight to congratulate and celebrate our 2020 Apprentice of the Year. It has been a different year, a year like no other, and in so many ways, like this presentation tonight, it is different. We usually do our presentation at the industry ball, but unfortunately due to COVID, had to cancel that. But we still wanted to celebrate this evening with our nominees and put on this special event. So thank you for coming here in person. I'd also like to acknowledge and a shout out to our online people there uh, through uh, Zoom. So thank you for coming online tonight and I hope you enjoy this evening as well. So this is our eighth Apprentice of the Year Award Ceremony. And we started this way back in 2013. Uh, and it acknowledges the work of automotive apprentices and their contribution throughout the Queensland automotive industry. The automotive industry is an industry of innovation and change. And to try and keep up, you have to keep learning and keep wanting a thirst to be educa educated. The apprenticeship is typically the first step and there is always opportunity ahead. And if you look at the automotive industry, you nominees are already ahead by getting in through, involved through your apprenticeship. Ultimately, we need technicians to service, maintain and repair vehicles over the coming decades. Whether there is mobility, there will be a need for light and heavy vehicle technicians, motorbike technicians, auto electricians, parts interpreters, collision repair and finishing technicians. I hope I didn't miss any sectors out there. No. In Queensland, the automotive industry alone, we've got over 6,000 apprentices in training at the moment. So to these nominees, keep going. Don't lose sight of your goals and get your training. Whilst our apprentices here tonight are at different stages of their journey, some are still going, others have finished and working as technicians. But no matter what stage of the journey, you probably needed to help a family and friend, which are here to support you tonight. These are the people that have helped you along the way. And I'd like to say thank you to those present for the support of this journey. And I'm sure the support will be needed for many years to come. For employers here, thank you for taking a chance. Without the support, ultimately, we wouldn't even be here tonight. 
The need to still develop individuals in the automotive industry remains the same. We need capable people to do a quality job to keep the economy moving. For our nominees, you wouldn't have made it here if it had not been for the support of your trainers. Our trainers underpin what we want to achieve as a training organisation and as a negotiation. Developing capable people to do a quality job to keep the economy moving. On behalf of our trainers, congratulations to the nominees on making it here tonight. And I'd personally like to thank these trainers and the amazing staff at MTAQ to support you through this journey. So, nominees, what does it mean to be the MTAQ Apprentice of the Year? Well, we have a few videos to show you from previous winners, and they'll give you an idea of the experiences and what lies ahead. Our first is Elliot Lemon, 2017 Apprentice of the Year. Hey guys, my name's Elliot Lemon. I'm a 22 year old from Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, I'm here to tell you about uh, my experience winning the uh, 2017 Apprentice of the Year Award. It's, uh, it's opened up a lot of doors and completely flipped my life around. Um, for example, I am living in Vancouver, Canada and doing my trade on the other side of the world. For me to win that award, it was like going to graduation and taking out the best price. It meant the absolute world to me. Before I left, I got to work for some, uh, some pretty cool race teams, like Triple Eight Red Bull Racing. Uh, I got to do two weeks with them as part of the award. I have a massive, massive list of people that uh, made this journey happen. Uh, this isn't, this isn't uh, all just me. Uh, my parents have been behind me the entire time. Uh, Chris and Debbie have always been there for me. I uh, love you guys for bits and I miss you so much. Uh, like I said, I'm not at home at the moment. Uh, Mark Williamson and Alex Williamson, uh, two really good friends of mine. As well as that, uh, Greg Constell and the guys at Greg Constell. Uh, I did my apprenticeship there. I spent my four years there. Uh, I learned a lot. We did a lot of old and new cars, all British. The guys at Red Bull Racing, they've just been great to talk to. I've made a lot of friends there now. Um, the guys at MTAQ, I cannot thank enough. You know, I showed them a bit of passion and showed me the world. Not to mention James Dixon, he was my trainer. That my entire apprenticeship was there once a month to see me. Uh, not to mention Jeff as well, my other trainer when I was going to college. Marcelo, always good for advice as well. The whole crew there, you, you all have helped so much. I am now working for a dealership, Park Shore BMW, here on the north side of Vancouver. Longer term, um, career-wise, I'd either like to go back to a race tech team, um, live that uh, crazy life for a little bit longer, or um, maybe working on uh, an exotic uh, dealership, Ferrari, Lamborghini, I'd like to, I'd like to try that out still. Thank you again, MTAQ, you've changed my life. Uh, I wouldn't have done my apprenticeship any other way. All right, see you guys, nice talking, mate. Thanks for that. It did look a bit static. Elliot loves a conversation. So we had to edit it a bit there. We've got a time frame we've got to run through tonight and if Elliot is watching, uh, sorry to cut it so short for you there, mate, but we want to be out of here by midnight. Uh, our second video is Jack Goodrich, our 2018 Apprentice of the Year. G'day guys. Hope you're all having a fantastic night. Congratulations to all the award winners. I uh, just wanted to say a quick, um, Congratulations to every single one of you. Um, whoever wins tonight uh, doesn't really matter because you guys have all got this far. Um, it's obviously a fantastic award, but uh, it all originated with every one of you. It's about what you're making from here on in. Uh, so, congratulations and use this award as a way to go out and grab new opportunities and, um, and find new pathways where you might like to learn new things or you know, new career pathways, new training. Um, new experiences. Uh, I just wanted to tell you a uh, quick experience of mine uh, and what the award brought out for me. Um, I got to go to the Triple Eight Engineering Workshop uh, with the Holden Red Bull team and worked there for two weeks, um, just doing some work experience, and then also did a round at Ipswich with them. Um, and the BHC the guys is amazing. I just want to thank MTAQ and MTAA Super for that incredible opportunity. 
um, I learned so much that camp. I think it's fantastic the um, the opportunity to bring. And I just want you guys to all know that you can go out and make your own experiences happen as well. Um, I use that little experience to help me go and assist at the Toyota 86 um, support series for the VA Supercar. I contacted the Toyota Kazoo Racing team and um, asked them if there was any opportunity for me to go and do some experience with them. So I was down in Newcastle with them at the end of last year. That was awesome. Um, and I wanted to go on and do some stuff with their rally team uh, and Neil Bates Motorsport. They were kind enough to invite me to go down to Canberra for the round one of the ARC at the start of this year. But unfortunately, due to COVID, um, they had to cancel uh, the round. So I haven't been able to go down. And until interstate travel starts to get a bit easier, um, it's probably going to be a while before that opportunity opens up again. But um, I've got my fingers crossed and um, hoping I'll be able to go do a few more things with them in the future. That'd be fantastic. So I just wanted to say a massive thank you to MTAQ and MTAA Super again. They were absolutely awesome in their support. Um, and also Pride Our Auto and Motorcycles, who I did my apprenticeship with. Uh, they supported me through the whole thing. Um, that's been doing. Um, an absolutely awesome dude who was my trainer and nominated me. Um, both them and Pride Our Him and Pride Our Auto and Motorcycles have been um, really, really supportive. And I just want to say thanks to them. But this video is really just an opportunity for me to tell you guys to go out and make every experience um, worthwhile, you know, grab everything by the horns and learn as much as you can, do as much as you can, um, and your future is just what you make it. So um, go ahead and grab it. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. Good luck to the, uh, the, uh, all the award winners, but um, it's about what you make it, so have fun. Excellent. Thanks for that, Jack. Uh, Jack, it was an interesting story with Jack here. Actually, was doing a medical engineering degree. Uh, stopped that and did his apprenticeship. Went out uh, west and uh, found his passion, which was automotive. And uh, you could see and sense from Jack just that experience and trying that, and finding something that he loved to do, uh, made it all worthwhile for him. So. Uh, Jack was a very worthy winner of the 2018 Apprentice of the Year. Our third and last video is Kimberly Wallace, our 2019 Apprentice of the Year. Hi guys, it's Kim. I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity and experience of winning Apprentice of the Year for 2019. It's been amazing. Um, don't really know what to say still after it's been what nearly 12 months. Um, definitely proud, definitely. Um, I set a challenge for myself when I first signed up to do the part interpreter trade. Um, it was my mission. I actually joked about it with my trainer that I wanted to win, as we all know. Um, so definitely proud. I think there's not a single day that goes by that someone doesn't mention it. Um, obviously having the trophy and the certificate and everything all there, people see it, so they ask questions. Um, it has opened up people's eyes a lot. They don't realise that it's a trade and we can get qualified by doing what we do. They think we just look at a computer screen all day. Um, so yeah, it's been good to actually educate people on it. Um, I do believe there's a girl now in one of the dealers in town here. She's signed up to do parts interpreting, I believe. So there's another one of us here, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, still definitely promoting the female in the male dominated industry as that's what I'm all about. Um, but yeah, challenging you definitely. Um, obviously with the virus and everything going on, but it's been a good year. Hopefully the next few months get a bit better, things calm down a little bit. Um, wish we could have all caught up in person, that would have been even better, but hey, this is how it is at the moment. So yeah, just want to say thank you again and um, hopefully I'll see you all soon. Bye. 
Excellent. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, a worthy winner as well. And certainly someone that set goals for herself and had a number of objectives she wanted to achieve and, and did that in space. So um, well done to Kimberly. For us as MTAQ, we're all about training and education and skilling. And uh, we also sponsor and support other programs other than the apprenticeship program. And whilst there can only be one winner tonight, as I mentioned before, there's always opportunities in the industry. And for example, there's two that we support. Uh, one is the Automotive Industry Ambassador Program. Um, and this is open to late stage apprentices and early tradespeople and for people in automotive. And it's free short courses that offer leadership and communication skills to recently graduated apprentices to show leadership in the workplace. A great opportunity and listening to tradespeople uh, and wanting to keep getting skilled uh, certainly a great opportunity to follow there. Another is the Queensland Automotive Trade Scholarship Fund through the Queensland Overseas Foundation. Uh, you would have heard Elliot, who was uh, in Vancouver at the time of his recording, and he was fortunate enough to get one of those scholarships uh, to travel overseas. You couldn't possibly pick a work year to go overseas, but in any case, he organised that well before. Uh, the, um, uh, the virus, and uh, he went through that, uh, organised a place of work, and he was sponsored seven and a half thousand dollars to help him get his uh, travel and associated expenses over there, with the view of getting that international experience and coming back to Queensland to support the industry locally here as well. It is a global industry, and uh, what we'd like to do is tap the international space and bring it back here as well. So, you always got to do a few plugs of these things, so that's about as much as we've got there. Uh, let's go over our nominees. Firstly, welcome Dan. I'm going to have to point you out, Dan. You've got to stand up. Here we go. Dan. Dan. <laughs> Daniel is a light vehicle technician who works at Roller Mechanical in Brisbane. Reaching this point has been a long road for Dan. He first started his apprenticeship with MTA Institute when he was 19, but after completing three years of the course, was unable to complete his training at that time. After about three years away from industry, he made his return in January 2019, finding a position with Roller Mechanical, a business run by husband and wife team Robert and Linda Thatcher. Since then, he has impressed both employer and training with his passion for work. Our trainer, Steve Hudspeth, noted Daniel has become a great apprentice, both with the work he has done in the workshop and in completing the required workload with MTA Institute. He has done both an incredibly high standard and his work ethic is second to none. As the son of a mechanic who became the owner of a dealership, who became the owner of a dealership, Daniel was brought up around cars and was tinkering and working with them since he was a child. Little wonder then a career in the automotive industry was where he would end up. I've been around cars my whole life, he said. Working on them was what I love doing and I can't imagine doing anything else. I come to work, I really enjoy it and I never think of it as a dog wheel. Daniel is pondering his, where his career might lead him and as a fan of performance pass, he's currently upgrading a Mark III Supra. Is that right? We've got an XL over there as well. I don't know if you want to spend some time on that. Uh, I move into that sector at some time uh, down the track. Looks like a good bet. Working in performance is the side of the industry uh, that is definitely something he'd like to pursue. And he's always been interested in that area. Maybe I can do that and run my own business on that. Congratulations, Dan. Our next nominee is Gabrielle Clip, December 2019. Everyone, round of applause. 
Probably all of the light vehicle equipment that I build mechanical and off road, I build to use Wooper. It's proven to be an outstanding apprentice. And have we got late visitors? An uh, outstanding apprentice and employer. He is very dedicated to a training and a workplace that is an excellent example to others, uh, apprentices and tradespeople. It all got started with my dad, Gabrielle and I. He's a contractor and a truck driver for his own business and does a lot of mechanical work himself. So from a very young age, I would work with him and I found it very interesting. After I finished, year, uh, finished school, I had a gap year and worked on various properties driving a lot of heavy machinery. It was interesting to me to know how it all operated rather than just being an operator. And that's when I decided to go for an apprenticeship as a diesel mechanic. However, after 12 months of working and training, Gabrielle said things weren't really working out and she made the move to Highfield, switching to a light vehicle apprenticeship and to training with MTA Institute. It's true that originally light vehicle was not my first pick, but honestly, it has been the best change. I thoroughly enjoy it. For me, there was just more variety and we do a bit of everything at high fields, from tuning to mechanical servicing to wheel alignments, four wheel drives to suspension kits, even the occasional truck. We do it all and I get to work on everything. As a young woman making her way in an industry which women have been and still are underrepresented, Gabrielle said that for her gender, gender wasn't an issue. I don't think it's a male or female thing. Obviously, it's a male-dominated industry, but I don't have a problem with that. I know where I am and who I am as a person, and I think it's really a personality thing. It's your personality that drives you, not whether you're male or female. And at the end of the day, we are here to do a job, and we all have something in common. We love working on cars. It's the same as if a bloke wants to go into hairdressing or beauty therapy. If they're passionate about it, just go for it. I agree. Gabrielle seems absolutely certain about her future in automotive and can see that an evolving nature of the industry is one that she will, wants to adapt to in the future. Well done, Gabrielle. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Anthony. Ouch. You make it. I didn't see you. No. I will still read through it. He might be online. He is online. I hope you go well, mate. Uh, Anthony is a light vehicle apprentice at Lockyer Valley Ford and Mitsubishi in Gatton, and has a passion for cars, has made him an excellent apprentice. Anthony is an outstanding student, both academically and technically, and will be most passionate about his trade over his trainer. Even in his spare time, he is consumed with working on cars and equipment. He epitomizes what a tradesperson should be. Starting as a school-based apprentice in year 10 means Anthony is cracking along and will likely be a tradesperson by the time he's tiny. While many other young people in year 10 are wondering what they want to do with their lives, for Anthony, there was never a question about a career in automotive and where he was headed. I've always been interested in cars, he said. My stepdad owned this business uh, called Carpenter Ford and working in automotive was 100% where I wanted to go. I started here, and when I was uh, in year 10, did two days a week through years 10, 11, and 12, before coming on full-time when the school finished. There's plenty of work to be done at Ford and Mitsubishi dealership, and Anthony likes to get stuck in to whatever comes through the door. The passion for working on cars doesn't stop at the dealership. Waiting at home, there's more work to be done on his tidy collection of Fords. Anthony says, the MTA Institute delivery on site really worked well for him, but he knows that when he finishes his apprenticeship, the training won't stop. As with all major manufacturers, Ford offers the chance for its technicians to get advanced training on its products. And as Anthony said, training and learning is important and I look to work towards becoming a Ford master technician. And I'm a Ford boy at heart. Well done, Anthony, and could I have a round of applause for Anthony? <laughs> All right, Evelyn, how are you? 
Welcome. And could I have everyone congratulate Emily and I'll see you in 2020. Uh, Emily was a light vehicle apprentice who started working at Scenic Motors, a Hyundai Mitsubishi and Ford dealership. Since starting her training at the beginning of 2019, both her and her employer and trainer have been impressed with her dedication to learning her craft. Evelyn deserves this recognition for showing such enthusiasm for her training and for the fact that she's progressing so well, noted her trainer, Andrew Bellows. Her productivity in the workshop is exceptional and she's showing all the signs of being a very promising mechanic. Always interested in cars and automotive, thanks to her mum being a fleet allocator and her dad, a truck driver. She would work on her own cars at home. Evelyn was keen to get involved in the industry and at the start of 2019, she set out to see if she could find a light vehicle apprenticeship. I was just looking around, asking people if they needed anyone and Scenic took me on. And it worked from there and I've had a lot of fun. I work across all Scenic's brands and I'm always learning new things. I started by doing mostly servicing jobs, but I'm now doing more complex work such as tires and suspensions and so on. So I'm really enjoying it. And I'm enjoying the training too. The on-site training really works for me. As a young woman working in what is still a male-dominated industry, Evelyn said apart from her physical challenge, help the physical challenges from work, everything has been positive. And she was unquestionably a part of the team. It can be a bit hard at some times. And when they ask me to move a gearbox or an engine around or something like that. But I find a way to work around these things. I find, and I like this, I find a smarter way. She's going really well and she certainly fits in there. At 19 and with at least a couple of years to go with the training, Evelyn said the most important thing for her was now to keep studying, keep working hard and put the effort in to complete her apprenticeship. I haven't really thought about a career, uh, where my career might go. At the moment, I'm concentrating on my apprenticeship, enjoying the work and the training and learning everything I can. That's excellent. Well done, Evelyn. Well done. We have Joshua, our March 2020 apprentice of the month. Joshua. Well, I think it's online, so we've got to clock even harder now. So uh, I'll get a round of applause for Joshua. He's actually at uh, Moorumba. Um, so I think we've got to quite a few sessions like that, but we'll wait till the end of it. Uh, completing his training at the beginning of the year and working as part of a team of the seven tradesperson and apprentices for, in the workshop of Warren Allen's complete mechanical support in Moorumba. A mining town located a couple of hours southwest of Mackay. Joshua proved himself to be an excellent apprentice, one that his employees had grew and developed to a point where he's taking younger employees under his wing and explaining to them how and why of a job. I grew up around cars, noted Joshua. I always was mucking around in the shed, uh, working on motorbikes and cars with my dad. I didn't know anything else, I just knew I wanted to become a mechanic. After leaving school early, Joshua found work as a technician or TA at a local workshop. And after about a year, got offered the chance to start an apprenticeship. Unfortunately, about a year into his training, Joshua had to go looking for another job uh, because the business closed, but eventually found a new home at complete my, uh, mechanical support. I came in to speak to Warren and he put me on as a TA and then put me on to complete my apprenticeship at Joshua. And the training was really good. I think that the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it is much better than learning in a classroom with other students. I didn't really do that well at school, so the one-on-one -on -one, one training really helped me. Working at Complete Mechanical Support means Joshua trained and works on a wide variety of vehicles. But, he said, light trucks were particularly plentiful. We do work on any vehicle here, but in the main, and seeing it's a mining town, we do a lot of work on land cruisers and highlights. This is the only thing they ever have up there is land cruisers and highlights. And a lot of trainers would love to live up there because it's land cruisers and highlights and stuff. You go and learn them inside and out, and he is a highlight himself. 
Joshua recognizes the fast changing nature of the automotive manufacturer of products, it means they're concentrating and updating the skills is something that must be considered. I love what I do now, but I do think I'll be looking to do more training. The way cars are changing, uh, the way the cars are changing, it would be a good idea to gain more skills and perhaps do something like an auto electrical training. Every year the cars that are appearing are different and there's always more to learn. Well done, Joshua, on your nomination for our March 2020. Agwen Cooper. Dan, stand up. Well done, Dan. Dan brought the support crew along. Well done, mate. Uh, Dan was a mature age apprentice working at Springfield Mechanical in Brisbane, and it's been a long and bumpy road for Dan to get to this point. His story is quite inspiring. Uh, born and brought up in Myanmar, formerly in Burma, and having learned English from St. Columbian's Catholic Priest and De La Salle brothers, Dan moved to Australia in 2010, taking a job at Toyota's manufacturing plant in Melbourne. You kind of know where this is going if he's taking a job in a manufacturing plant in Australia, but unfortunately, it wasn't long before the first significant changes to the nation's vehicle manufacturing capability were being announced. And following on the heels of Ford and Holden, Toyota revealed in early 2014 that it was to close its factories. For Dan, closing the plant was a blow, but started him on a new direction in his career journey, a direction that would see him offered a job and an apprenticeship in Queensland. Dan noted, when I lost my job at Toyota Camry factory, I really wanted to stay in the industry and get an apprenticeship. But I think employers were looking for someone a bit younger than me. I tried for about 18 months to find someone to take me on, but was always rejected. Then a friend of a friend who ran a workshop in Brisbane offered me a job, so I moved up here in 2015. After a few false starts, it was great when Springwood Mechanical took me on. Coming from a farming background in northern Myanmar, there were not too many cars there, and growing up in the country, was locked, uh, growing up, the country was locked down and separated from other countries by dictatorship. So the cars that were around were really old. That meant the mechanical industry was not popular and there was not much opportunity. However, I really wanted to do that work. So I was very glad to get into the industry here. The training is unlikely to stop for Dan once he's achieved his goal of becoming an automotive technician. I really enjoy what I'm doing and I might start my own business one day. But I will pursue further qualifications too. The industry is changing and I want to be equipped with as much knowledge as I can. It was a very interesting time. Well done, Dan. Congratulations. Thank you. Our next apprentice is Ethan Reed, May 2020. Ethan, where are you hiding down? <laughs> that picture does you no know justice, mate. I, I gotta say, there's much better pictures. Uh, Ethan is a panel beating apprentice uh, and has been working at Total Classic Restoration in Warana uh, on the state's Sunshine Coast for the past couple of years. For a young boy with a passion for cars, it's been a fun job. Ethan noted, we specialise in restorations, but we do quite a, quite a lot of customs and high-end one-off builds, and it's pretty good to be here. Getting to work on cars was something Ethan always wanted to do, but for a year, but for a few years, he drafted away as a roofer. Then one day, he decided that it was time to pursue a career he really wanted, and he approached totally classic owner Jerry uh, Koppelman for a job. I've been passionate about old cars pretty much my whole life. And while I was a fully qualified metal roofer, I really wanted to follow my dream and work on uh, cars. And it was getting too hot on the roof as well. While Ethan works primarily as a panel beating apprentice, he also gets to try his hand at some paint work, something he enjoys and plans to take on as part of his career moving forward. And this has led to some pretty unique jobs. It's great to be able to do some painting, and I recently worked on a 1913 locomotive where 
we were all about mobility. So it was once used in Budrum and then went up to Townsville for a while before coming back down here. We had the opportunity to do some restoration on it. And I was working on it for about eight hours on the gun. Hopefully in the near future that we put on display. But the total classic team is a small dedicated team uh, unit working in the sector of what the industry uh, that demands those to be dedicated to their work. And that's why his colleagues, uh, and that's what his colleagues are. It's a small team, but we're really passionate about what we do. There's plenty of responsibility working on these vehicles, but we know what we're doing and what needs to be done and we get on with it. It's a great workshop, great bunch of people, and it's pretty special. Well done, Ethan, congratulations. <laughs> John Bancroft Arnott, our June 2020. John. A motorcycle mechanic working with Nippon Performance in Brisbane and has been in the business since it was established in 2017. Nippon offers a wide range of services from general maintenance to performance tuning to restorations. On bikes of all ages, it's a pretty special place to learn your trade. John is something of a latecomer to the industry, but motorcycles have long been a part of his life and he always wanted to learn more about them. I've always been interested in bikes and everyone I've met who rides bikes was pretty cool. So I knew I wanted to do something in the industry, he said. I was tinkering with an old bike I had, had to serve it and so on, but I never had the guts to tear right into it and do a full engine rebuild or anything like that. I wanted to learn more. And he has, and he's learned so much from Nippon and how to set points on an old two-stroke enduro bike, to how machine parts, uh, do machine parts and to rebuild engines, to doing dyno tune work on fuel injection bikes, heaps of stuff. I work on all these jobs and uh, for a while for me, it almost feels normal, but everyone who still does their apprenticeship says, wow, that's pretty special. And I'm thankful to be here, that's for sure. The passion John has for the industry has been proven in his work and in his training and the one-on-one -on -one aspect which he finds works well for him and which is delivered by his trainer, Ken. John is a very conscientious apprentice, made at Ken. He is always looking to expand his knowledge and, an evolving, uh, and is evolving into a highly skilled tradesperson. He's willing to invest in the equipment needed to be a well-rounded technician has completed all the tasks I've set for him and he's achieving a very high standard. John is focused on the future, which will allow him to get as much out of his time with Nippon as possible. There is a lot I can learn at Nippon and I want to utilize my time here as best I can. I definitely want to stay here doing what I'm doing and learning as much as I can while I can. John, congratulations on your nomination. Well done. Next, Stephanie Williams, July 2020. Steph. <laughs> Following the auto electrician dad in the automotive industry was all but guaranteed after spending many happy hours at the top with working with him on cars and hot rods that were a shared passion. Stephanie noted that she'd always had a passion for cars and stayed. For many years, my dad owned his own business in Browns Plains and were always tinkering on cars and had it at the house on the, uh, had it the house and on the hot rods that we built together. That early exposure to the mechanical and auto electrical world would lead to a first step into the automotive industry as a receptionist service advisor at a large dealership operation before I moved into a workshop as a live vehicle apprentice. After a couple of years, Stephanie moved into car and truck service, uh, uh, truck service provider CB Automotive in January 2020. And she looked to continue her education at a smaller business with a more tight-knit team and more varied work. That move included a shift to train with MTA Institute and Stephanie said that work that felt for her. According to Andrew Ballas, the trainer, her determination has made her a standout apprentice. Andrew was really impressed with her commitment. She has a genuine passion for the industry and has her own project car. She speaks about that car with a lot of pride 
And as a trainer, that's wonderful to hear. Do I have to reveal the car? Yeah, it's a 1979 Holden Gemini. But as a young woman working in what is still a male-dominated industry, Stephanie said she has been determined from the start to be the best mechanic she could, and be one, uh, and being one of only a handful of women in the workshop did not put off her dream. I would recommend the industry to any woman. She, there's a lot of supportive people in the industry. She went on to say, ultimately, I would like to start and run a successful business with my dad. That has always been the dream. Well done, Stephanie, and congratulations. <laughs> Lastly is Quinton Smith. Now, Quinton this week got his uh, award, even though we're in October, but he actually got his award presented to him by Scott Morrison. So while he was up there, purely by luck, not by any magical power that we have, but uh, just happened to be in the time. So uh, we were glad to see that and uh, appreciated that opportunity for uh, Skymo to present that award to uh, Quinton. Uh, Quinton, an auto electrical apprentice working at an SMW Group in Rockhampton, has impressed with the top notch quality of his work as he pushes towards completing what will, in fact, be his second apprenticeship. He has completed his diesel fitting trade qualification with SMW a few years ago. Working towards being dual qualified gives you an idea. Quinton's passion for the industry, but also the wide variety of work done at SMW Group. Quinton noted, we do a wide range of work, but mostly mining equipment, such as haulage trucks, dozers, graders, and ancillary machinery. We do go out to mining sites every now and again to do support work, but what I really enjoy in town is when the work, the equipment comes into the workshop and it normally needs a pretty major diagnostic work, which I enjoy. It's good working for a big company because you get diversity in your work. You're not working on one type of equipment at all the time, but doing all manner of jobs such as diagnostic work, installations, fit outs, and so on. With his dad being a diesel fitter, it was no wonder Quinson first became interested in that work. However, like many younger generation who enter the industry, there is a recognition that the emergence of electric vehicles and new digital technology means having an auto electrical skills will be very useful. I started that first apprenticeship when I was about 16 and left school to take the opportunity. My dad had been a diesel fitter for many years and I liked the nature of the bigger equipment. It is different to what you see driving around town and you have to go out of your way to work on that type of equipment. Back then, I didn't think about auto electrical or knew much about it. But after I got, uh, but after doing the diesel trade, I thought I like the electrical side a bit more. I find auto electrical to be more involved, and it's a trade to build on. Electric vehicles are appearing, and there's autonomous systems and mining and haulage, and all that is tied into auto electrical. I enjoy working at SWB, and I like the idea of working up through the ranks from the apprentice to tradesman to a senior tradesman, and so on. And there are opportunities here, which is great. Well done, Quinton, and I hope you're enjoying your night watching today. That is the end of our nominees. Now, what we have is our supporter who has made a video, MTAA Super, and CEO Leanne Turner, who will announce the winner of the 2020 MTAQ Apprentice of the Year, which is me saying, make sure you listen. Okay. Hi everyone, Leanne here from MTAA Super, coming to you from Canberra. Of course, I really wish I was in Queensland with you all to celebrate tonight. But as we know, plans in 2020 haven't quite gone hand in hand, but as always, we can find a way. Before I get to the big announcement, I'd really like to thank MTAQ Chairman Paul Peterson and CEO Dr. Brett Dale for inviting MTAA Super to participate tonight. 
For the last 30 years, MTAA Super has taken great pride in partnering with motor trades associations across the nation to support the automotive industry and the professionals who keep it going. As we all know, the industry has been growing and evolving rapidly over the last few decades. Much of this growth is due to the dedication and passion of the countless employers and workers who toil tirelessly to make this industry the best it can be. Of course, this year, a lot of people are doing it tough. COVID-19 has introduced a lot of restrictions and pressure on workplaces and families everywhere. Businesses have closed, jobs have been lost, some of us have lost loved ones. That's why now, more than ever, it's so important that we continue to support one another and continue taking this industry to new heights, which of course is why we're here tonight. The Apprentice of the Year Award is a prestigious accolade for an apprentice in the early stages of their career. It not only rewards outstanding achievement and excellence, but recognises the contribution these amazing young men and women make in shaping the future of the industry. And judging by the strength of tonight's nominees, it's a very bright future. I'd really like to congratulate all of this year's finalists. Your hard work, excellence and passion are inspirations for us all. And congratulations too to your friends and family and colleagues who have supported you throughout the year. I'm sure they're all very proud and like me, can't wait to see what you do next. But of course, there can only be one winner. So without further ado, I would like to announce, I'm very proud to announce that the 2020 MTA Queensland Apprentice of the Year is Gabrielle Cliff. And I look so forward so very much to catching up with you all in person in 2021. Take care. Congratulations, congratulations, Gabrielle. Well done. Another round of applause. <laughs> and it's not an award ceremony without a novelty size check. Thank you. And well done. What do you reckon? I know, right? <laughs> um, shocked. <laughs> I'm truly humbled. Um, to be nominated for this award is a true honour, and I believe that each and every apprentice that is here tonight um, is just as deserving for this award. Um, it's it's honestly a really good feeling to know that when we all qualify, one day we are going to be leading this industry and to know that we're going to have people that are just as passionate as myself, um, willing to learn, eager to get the job done and uh, make the industry as professional and as good as it is. It's, it's good to know because at the end of the day, we're going to be working together. Um, so, yeah. Well done. Now, is there anyone you'd like to thank out there? To you, but we'll keep it quick there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like, I'd love to thank my family, my mum, my dad, and my sisters. No, they couldn't be here tonight because half of them are New South Walesians. Um, you know, they instilled the passion in me, um, they instilled the work ethic in me, and they've been behind me the whole way. Um, I'd also like to thank my employers, Catherine and Craig Bales. You guys are amazing. Um, there are no words to describe a, how honoured I am to work for you and the opportunities that you've provided me day in, day out. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much to Wayne and also Colin Crawford. Colin originally did nominate me, um, however, he left. But Wayne has, Wayne Abrahamson has continued with the training and does an awesome job. So thank you, Wayne. Thank you for taking on my difficult questions and being stubborn. 
So you're a legend for that. And also just um, some family friends of Martin's. So you guys have had my back throughout all my apprenticeship stuff and teaching me their knowledge as well. So thank you very much. Excellent. Very well said and a well worthy <laughs> Yes. So it turns out this is one of one of the questions, and I know Gabrielle got into a big conversation. I know she was working on it. She's like, I've got to get back to the system. Can we just have five minutes of your time back? Yeah. So I had to do with the power steering issue, and it turns out that looking with some data and stuff, they actually just really painful to bleed because you just got to keep bleeding, keep bleeding, keep bleeding until that shutter goes out. Well done. There you go. You're on the right path. Okay. Well, I'm going to get you to the Excellent. Now, that actually concludes our formalities tonight, and our online audience will be leaving it as time. However, I still will be calling the nominees up, congratulating them to receive an award, and we're going to stand over the front here. Uh, we're going to get some photos. Afterwards, uh, we'll ask people to go and there's the Motor Trades Association photo wall back down near the red carpet there uh, to use for memories of the night. And also, I will say, not to forget to check out uh, once you leave, but I will call up people to get their award. Just to go on record, you can't actually cash this check. One of our winners in previous years went into a bank with this check, put it across and said, can I get that as well? Just a warning. So, um, but that's it for this evening. Well done, everyone. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this evening's uh, awards. I'm once again very thankful that you're able to come out, enjoy the evening, uh, and have a wonderful uh, rest of the night. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.